medical staff dumped her on the ground. Why did your medical staff bring her out of that whole chair and dump her? You would have to ask. Hi everybody, Nightmare on Scam Street here. Now, I'm going to take a look at probably one of the more controversial videos that's been around for a bit. Uh, made by somebody who is himself a bit controversial, Dog Um No Thanks. This is the events at the AV hospital where the female patient was apparently dumped out of a wheelchair just at the entrance to the hospital car park. Now, Doug Omno um, Thanks and AV Watchman happened to be there at the time, and a lot of people have said that this is far too much of a coincidence to be true. In fact, there's lots and lots of accusations of faking on the day of the incident, it was the 19th of September, wasn't it? Correct. I believe, yeah. Um, and were you with AV Watchman? AV well, that was the first day that I got up there, but uh, the very first day I got up there, the very first time I've ever met AV Watchman face-to-face -face, um, was, uh, was that day. So that was an interesting point to establish. Dog had not met AV Watchman before. This was their first time meeting face to face. I'm sure they'd spoken or chatted online or something. Um, when Dog first arrived there, it was I think he said it was four o'clock in the afternoon. And the first thing they did was to go and do an audit somewhere, and then they did a uh, did some cop watching. Um, there was a house that was being raided. We were out cop watching, and we so big dark, and uh, we just got done with a cop watch where we could. What whereabouts were you cop watching then? Uh, we were in Lancaster. We were like two, three miles from the hospital when we were at a, a house call. Okay, so you're in Lancaster, and and you'd met up with AV Watchman during the daytime, yeah? Correct. Did you did you were you with him like the I whole day? I got there approximately. No, I, I finally got there around 4 p.m. Okay. Uh, Pacific time. So and it was still light outside. So when Dog arrived um, to meet AV Watchman, it was still light outside and it was 4 p.m. Um, from what I'm told, they met up and they went to do an audit. And then he went cop watching for a bit. And We actually went and did an audit first at... Um, um, the Kern County um, City Hall slash uh, Detention Center, because uh, they had buses coming in and out of the, the courthouse, I mean. And um, and uh, we, we actually got assaulted by... Um, we actually got assaulted by Kern County uh, DA, which that Kern? video... Probably, Is that Kern County? K-E-R-N? Yeah. K-E-R-N. Okay. You got assaulted by a DA... Right, you might notice that I interrupt Dog a lot. This is uh, an actual interview technique to put people off of their stride a little and it stops them concentrating on what they believe is the truth and helps you get to the actual truth because when you're, um, when you're in mid-sentence and someone stops you, your guard goes down. Um, I learned this technique a while ago, and I use it quite a lot. So right. let's get back to the to the thing. You're doing the First Amendment audit at the Kern County City Hall and Detention Centre. Um, right. You had a running with the DA. Um, what, right about what time was that then? You said you'd met up with the AV Watchman it about, was about four. It was four. About four o'clock. It was four, like probably four thirty, four twenty, because it was closing at five and they kicked us out at five o'clock and it was actually like five minutes till after they slammed my hand in the, in the DA door and, and one of them walked into Steve. So what I'm trying to do here is establish a timeline. We know that, uh, Doc said he arrived in, uh, the area around 4 PM and he met up with AV Watchman and then around about 4:30, they did this audit at the Kern County, uh, courthouse and uh, detention centre 
we know that the um, at five o'clock they tried to get rid of them and that's when the altercation occurred so we have a timeline of arriving in the area at four o'clock meeting up with AV watchmen doing their first audit around four, four no, about four thirty to five o'clock and and from then moving on to somewhere else I asked Doug if the uh, recordings they made at the Kern County uh, Police and Detention Centre were actually live streams or just recordings. Those were static recordings, and they were uh, the Kern County DA video in one day had like four thousand or something views. It'll become clear later why that video isn't online anymore. So far, we've established that they met at four. Um, did an audit from 4.20, 4.30 to 5, and the next thing happened was uh, a police call to a house. And then we had th we, we actually had one other audit on there from a police station that Steve and I had went to right before the call. Yeah. And, um, and, and right before the call, uh, we left the police station, went to the, went to the call that was in the neighborhood. And um, after the cops phoned out of there and we couldn't keep up with them because they left for a shooting call and we didn't hear it on the scanner, okay. um, it, they took off and we couldn't catch them. And as we were getting onto the freeway, um, Steve's like, you know, what? I'll follow up on AV Hospital because last time we were there, uh, the, you know, they put hands on us and they were getting crazy. And I was with SGV and West Coast Digital. So it seems that AV Watchman and a few other auditors had been to the hospital before. But what I wanted to find out from Doug specifically is what time he believed they arrived at the hospital. Okay, let's let's get back to the 19th again. Okay. Uh, so you'd done the, the city hall, and then you said you went and did some cop watching. That's correct. Um, do you remember where that was? Or was that I don't know. generally it was running it around? It was the... two miles. It was like two to four miles away from the hospital. Okay. And that I, sort of I covered the period of time minutes, from so maybe six minutes in the hospital from the cop cop watch. So, yeah, so I would say like two to four miles. So it's about five thirty or so. You were cop watching. It was dark. It was dark. It went into dark time, and I think it had started getting dark earlier. And it, it was, was already. It was already. Dark. Yeah, I know, I know it's dark when you got to the hospital, but I don't know what. What time that was literally, exactly? Literally, once we left the call, I would say six thirty. I would say we got there around like seven, like maybe six thirty, seven. So we got there in the end, um, seven o'clock ish. Um, it was dark. That was clear from the video. Now, here's the interesting point. They had a pretty random time from when they met up till they got to the hospital. They could have been much later, it could have been earlier. And I suppose some of it depended on the traffic, some of it depended on how long they were cop watching, how long they were auditing. So there's um, some good clear timeline here already. I'll just repeat, Doug met AV Watchman at 4, 4.30 they started auditing at Kern County um, City Hall, 5 o'clock they were kicked out and had some run-in with the um, district attorneys, 6 o'clock-ish they were cop-watching and then they rolled up at the hospital around 6.30 to 7.00. This vagueness about the timing is actually quite interesting. It's an indication of truth. If Doug had said to me, we arrived there at 6.47 exactly, that would have been suspicious. The fact that he's a bit vague about it um, gives me much more reason to believe that's a, a true statement. Um, so, you arrived at the hospital, and literally as you were getting out of the car, you heard, the commotion is that is that how it went down well so i um, my door wasn't even open yet steve's like steve's window was down a little bit and uh he was at the driver door and he's like man i gotta get my uh, my tripod uh do you hear that and i look and i see this lady being wheeled wheel toward us and she starts screaming so all i i didn't even have my gimbal out all i hit was record you know quick camera double click yeah. my power button went to quick camera and i was 
I started recording right away. And the first 18 seconds I got, Steve didn't get. That's where they dumped her, yeah. uh, pried her hand off the wheelchair, and kicked her. Hand out of my you can't face. On get your hand out of my face. Get your hand out of my face. You can't record on property. Says who? Says our policy. Why is she on the ground right now? I'm going live, bro. So that was the video Doug managed to shoot literally as they got out of the car. Um, you could see the aftermath of the dumping, but to be fair, it's easy to work back a few steps. You can see the people around her and the spit mask on her face. So this lady who um, I'm hoping to interview soon was literally wheeled out of the hospital to the, the nearest car park pedestrian entryway, exit way and dumped out of the wheelchair onto the ground and that is quite a disturbing image but it was literally right. they'd walked out of the door of the hospital across the car park and were in the process of dumping her when you two pulled up they weren't even in the process of dumping her yet. She was yelling and screaming. They were in holding the, her in the wheelchair. All right, they were holding walk, her in the wheelchair. Walking right. her towards us. Oh, yeah, walking her towards us. Like, she was, like, trying, she was trying her might to get the hell out of that wheelchair. So, um, we've seen the clip where Doug turns up, puts his camera on, and catches that 18 seconds or so of recorded video and then switches to live stream. That's when that recorded video stops. We've all seen the video after that. And the point of, of this video isn't to showcase that one, it's to discuss the truthfulness of that one. The thing is, people say it was a setup or a fake. Now, I just want you to think about this for a minute. First of all, they didn't know what time Doug was going to arrive. Um, he didn't get there till 4 o'clock. They messed around doing some audits and um, cop watching. And that was purely random. That could have gone on for hours, the cop watching, or it could have gone on for minutes. It, it just purely depended on the circumstances. So they arrived at the hospital between 6.30 and 7 and it was dark and that's all verifiable data but the the big thing that people say is that this was a setup uh, imagine how many things would have to be put in place what would have to happen probably the only way this could possibly conceivably be set up is if the woman was in the hospital and she was told to start making a fuss at a certain time even then there's no way of predicting that she would be bundled into a wheelchair they might have just said out you go or something they might have just held her there until the police arrived the the actual logistics of trying to establish whether the woman would be bundled up into a spit mask pushed into a wheelchair wheeled out of the hospital into the car park and dumped at the car park footpath entrance they couldn't know that at all that was impossible to know unless there was somebody on the staff that was involved as well now just imagine there were probably five or six staff members involved in pushing that woman out of the hospital there was medical staff and there was security staff the fuss that was made about this um, is almost certainly going to cost some people maybe part of their livelihood or their job um, they might not be able to work in that field anymore who on earth is going to risk that for a, a video to go on YouTube. It is utterly, utterly unbelievable that any one of the hospital staff would have agreed to set this up. And even if one person had agreed to it, how would they get the other people to agree? So it, it's impossible. 
that's my that's my conclusion to this matter it's impossible for it to have been set up the pure chance of the woman going inside and say for example being told now it's time to make a fuss we're on our way they had no idea what would happen to her if that was the case they could have said make a fuss and she could have been making a fuss in the hospital and they might have just said to her calm down let's go and sit down and talk about it or the security people might have come down and and kept her until the police arrived there were so many variables it was impossible for that to happen and the chances of one of the or more of the hospital staff being open to this deception is just unbelievable there's so much they would lose but Doug's problems didn't really start until two days later they went back to the hospital grounds and or rather outside the hospital grounds and they were recording from the footpath when the police decided to arrest them you guys can you identify yourselves I, Arantis we know you did you get my email? Okay. Why'd you guys come out here in a swarm? What, what were we doing wrong? What were we doing wrong? For what? No, you're not. No, I'm not trusting. You have to. You have to decide. So, AV Watchman and Doug got arrested for trespassing which is really strange they were on the public footpath they'd literally only been there a short time they had not gone onto the hospital grounds at all yet the police decided that they would arrest them for trespassing and that was the start of the downfall in a way because once the police had them in custody they confiscated all the equipment the phones and the cameras and so on right and uh and uh it was incriminating to them and so what happened is is when we got arrested two days later and i don't mean to jump around uh two days later when we were arrested on the 21st is when they got both of my phones and all of Ca steve's camera equipment and everything and we had the equipment that we used that day at the da's office and so um they asked us to erase the first of all they asked us to when this is we we're just in jail for for terrorists or no, i'm sorry for trespass yeah, uh, it was it was almost midnight, and we were supposed to get uh, cited and released at midnight. And they brought us into a room, and they asked uh, us to remove our our AV hospital videos and delete right. them. And uh, we said no. And then not minutes later, we got uh, charged with criminal threats, which upped our upped our bail to fifty thousand mm -hmm. from the five thousand site release. Right. And so, that video went missing. And the video, oh. and they deleted the video, presumably. Then. Yeah, they got it removed off YouTube somehow. I mean, I didn't get any any complaint, anything is, that I was supposed this to. This is the Kern you know? County DA's one that got removed. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So it seems that if it was a setup, a they went to a huge amount of trouble to get it set up, and b they really paid the price. It took them days to get this stuff back or maybe even a week or two I think and um, the memory cards were wiped the videos had been taken off of YouTube by someone it wasn't dog that video disappeared and it was a, an absolute mess that's the only way to describe it so for all those people who say this was a setup, I'm going to go over the fine points once last time, one last time. One, Doug wasn't sure what time he was going to arrive to meet AV Watchman. When they did meet, around four o'clock, they had a chat and obviously started to get to know each other a bit because it was the first time they'd actually met face to face. Doug went with AV Watchman to the Kern County City Hall and um, Detention Centre 
and they had a, a run-in with the DA at that point. Um, there are more details around somewhere else. Uh, it's not really important. They had a run-in with the DA. And as a consequence, that became quite costly later. They went on from there to do some cop watching. And roughly 6.30, 7 o'clock, they rolled up outside the AV hospital because, as uh, Doc said, AV Watchman and a few other auditors had been there about a month before and had had some problems. So they decided to give that a try. And literally, as they were pulling up outside the hospital on the street, they heard a commotion. Doug immediately put his camera into record mode and you saw the result. The What we didn't see was the lady being pushed from the hospital to the point where she was dumped. Now, we're told, or I'm told by Doug, that the video from the hospital is not available. It should be available under the uh, Freedom of Information Act, but it isn't. And just to be clear, what I'm talking about here is the CCTV video of the hospital's CCTV surveillance system that would have caught the lady being moved from inside the the hospital through the foyer out and through the car park. None of that video is available. So what that means is that there is no direct evidence that the woman was actually inside the hospital other than she was wearing a spit mask and she was being escorted out of the hospital by a gang of guys and security people. The woman was dumped on the floor. I, I know that Doug rendered assistance um, despite his bullishness he's actually a very caring guy and um, he tried to render what assistance he could. He even gave her his coat to try and keep her warm. Then, a couple of days later, they went back to the hospital as a whole group of people were there um, protesting the events. And they'd only been there a very short time when Doug and Navy Watchman were arrested for trespass. They were taken to the police station and they were booked and they were asked to remove the videos of the hospital from their phones and from the internet and they refused. At that point as Doug says very very shortly afterwards they the charges were upped to, to making threats and that's a, a higher grade. I think that's that's maybe even a felony. And it bumps the bond money from five thousand to fifty thousand. Now that's a significant change. So in order to get out of custody, they had to come up with fifty grand's worth of bond, which I guess would have been five grand of actual money each. But they didn't come away with their equipment. Their phones and cameras were retained by the police. The video was actually taken down. This is the video of the district attorneys uh, assaulting them at the Kern County um, City Hall. Doug has been left with a case pending. Um, bail money had to pay traveling backwards and forwards because he's got to go back there for his court dates and it's a total mess now if anyone in their right mind thinks that it was set up and it was a con they're crazy frankly there's so much organizing so much logistics so much bribing of people to even risk their jobs it is just utterly unfeasible that this whole thing was faked since the event 
I can believe personally that the lady involved has made a meal of it because she can see big compensation coming. Um, so for her it's probably made worse by the way she feels right now. However, fair dues to her, she was treated in a totally inhumane way. So there you go, that's my take on the AV Hospital video. In my opinion, having spoken to Doug and had a very long conversation with him, the snips of conversation I put on here, uh, with Doug's permission by the way, are a tiny part of the whole conversation. Um, I did a lot of cross-checking and double-checking and um, repeated asking the same question at different times in different ways. So I know that by the way I got Doug flustered when I was talking to him by interrupting and then asking the same question again um, that I'd asked 10 minutes earlier, I know that he didn't have time to think of the right answer. It just came naturally. So I'm very confident that Doug's answers were true. That's it. Um, hope you enjoyed watching. I know it's mostly me talking and a few little clips, but that's the way this one had to be. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.